What we are doing right now is we're going to learn how to find composite functions. Composite functions are very similar to your combinations of functions, but they are just a little bit different. Uh, with combinations, you're either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to be taking one function and plugging it into another. So what we're going to try to find is what is read as f of g of x. And just like the other functions, what we need to know is what that represents. So when you see f of g of x, that really means this. What you're doing is you're taking your g function and you're going to plug it into your f function. Okay, well, both of those functions are defined for us. Our f function is represented as 3x minus 4. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, our variable, we're multiplying it by 3, and then we're subtracting 4. Our g function is given to us as this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that g function and we're actually going to plug it into our f function. So x squared minus 2x plus 6 is our g function and we're going to plug that into our f function. Like I said, in your f function, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply everything by 3, and then you're going to subtract 4. So when we plug that in, we're going to take x squared minus 2x plus 6. We're going to multiply it all by 3, and then we're going to subtract 4 from it. So when we do this, we get our f of g of x to be... 3x squared minus 6x plus 14. And that is f of g of x. When you're finding domain, you're actually going to look at two things when you're talking about your domain. As you can see, when you find f of g of x, when you look at this uh, line right here, you will see that there is no f of x anymore. So two things will limit your domain. Your uh, g of x will limit your domain, and then your final answer will limit your domain. Well, in this one right here, as you can see, there is no limitation to what's inside the parentheses, and your final answer does not have a variable in the denominator or a variable in the radical, so therefore your domain is represented by all real numbers, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. Looking at your ne next example, this time very similar, except now we're going to try to find g of f of x. So this one's a little bit different because now what we're going to do is we're going to take our f function, which is given to us as 3x minus 4, and we're going to plug it into our g function. So as you can see, we're going to take that and we're going to plug it in. So we'll say uh, 3x minus 4 is what we're plugging into our g function. In g, what we're doing is we're going to square whatever we plug in. So I'm going to square this. I'm going to multiply it by negative 2, and then I will add 6. When you square a binomial, you need to write it twice and multiply it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in my head, but make sure you do that. And then we're going to distribute the 2 to both of these, so negative 6 and then plus 8 plus 6. And we'll then go ahead and combine like terms, so we have one quadratic. However, we do have two linear terms, so negative 30x, and then uh, we have three constants, so let's see, that'll be 14, so plus 30. Hopefully I did my math right. 16, 24 looks good. Again, to find our domain, we're going to look at two things. We'll look at what we plug in, which in this case will be our f function, is right here and here, and then we're going to look at our answer to determine our domain. Neither of those have limitations, so therefore, again, your domain will be all real numbers. We'll look at one more example. Okay, this time it's just a little bit different. What we're trying to do this time is instead of finding f of g of x, what we're actually going to do is find g of f of x, or g of f of 1. So when we rewrite this, it looks like this. So anytime we're finding just a function value, it's a little bit easier for us. Because what we can do first is actually find f of 1. So I'll come down here and find f of 1. So we'll find f of 1 to be equal to 3 times 1 minus 4. When we do that, you'll get 3 minus 4. So f of 1 is equal to negative 1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find g of negative 1. So we take that negative 1 and we plug it into our g function. So we will say g of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 6. So when you do this, you'll get 1 plus 2 plus 6, which should give us an answer of 9. 
So our g of f of 1 is equal to 9. 